Ming. Welcome to our workshop on six pillars of brain health. It's sponsored by AARP. My name is Sheila Patil. I'm an AARP Charlotte volunteer. I have been an AARP member since 1990, and I have used and been benefited by many of their products and services over the years. So I decided to volunteer for AARP after I retired. So here I am. I'm not an expert on the topic, or I'm not trying to sell you any ARP membership. The Six Pillars of Brain Health Workshop is designed to empower you to take charge of your brain health and learn more about the six pillars of um, healthy uh, brain lifestyle. Today, my colleague Roger Pierce and I will be co-hosting this workshop and our colleague Charlene Hartman will be assisting us with the chat and the, any technical difficulties we may have. Before we begin, uh, let's just make sure that our phones are on silence and we will be muting your microphones uh, during the presentation, but we do want you to participate with your questions, comments, suggestions. So please direct them to Charlene in the chat, via chat. Now, I'm uh, assuming you all know where the chat button is located. It's uh, on the Zoom bar. Uh, the Zoom bar may be at the bottom of your screen or at the top of your screen, depending on what system you're using. And the chat button is between the green share screen button and the participant uh, button. Just type your message in the bottom of the window and click enter. I am going to share my screen, so um, you may see a blank screen for a second or two, so please don't be alarmed. Um, you will see my screen in just a second, so let me know if you can see the presentation. Six pillars of brain healthy lifestyle. So, I, uh, Sheila, I thought I might just add one thing, which uh, I heard uh, somebody say the other day on, on the Internet regarding Zoom. Uh, it's there's uh, for people who are very new to Zoom. Mm -hmm. If you go into chat and you may have a little bit of trouble trying to get back into the main screen because you may have a couple of different windows now showing on your on your own screen. So just an easy way of getting right back into the main session look at the bottom of your screen and you'll see something that looks like a, like a video camera. You know, it's a blue icon with the white uh, camera icon on it. You just click on that and it takes you right back into the main screen. Uh, it's really important for us to share something with you. It, it's a disclaimer. And basically we're not doctors, you know that, but we just wanna make that clear. So this session really is intended for information and education it does not constitute medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. You should always seek the advice of a physician or other qualified health care provider regarding your personal health and before beginning or changing any treatment, activity, program, or dietary plan. Now, by the way, that includes uh, anything that we talk about today that may relate to exercise. Always, again, seek advice from your health care provider first before uh, considering any new way that you may exercise um, because we will be mentioning that a little later on in, as part of our six pillars of, of brain health. AERP is not responsible for the consequences of any decisions or actions that are taken in reliance upon or as a result of the information that we provide during this event today. Uh, as I said, we're not medical experts and we really cannot provide specific advice or recommendations. But hopefully the information we covered today, it'll help you to, to be more informed, make more informed decisions on how to lead a brain healthy lifestyle. That's what it's all about today, brain healthy. Now that the disclaimer is over, let's start with some good news. Until recently, the prevailing scientific wisdom held that the human brain was pretty much fixed early in life. Experts believe that at birth, our brains had all the cells that we were ever going to have. I'm not a neuroscientist or a medical doctor, so I'm not going to go into the structure of the brain 
or how it operates. But what I share with you today is based on extensive research. And the good news is that regardless of your age, our brain is constantly changing and can make new nerve cells. The best part is that we can do a lot to take care of our brain health and improve our quality of life. Experts say that only about 30% of the physical aging can be traced to our genes and rest is all up to us. So based on the current brain research, vetted for you by AARP, Global Council on Brain Health, and our works for staying sharp, we have identified six pillars of brain healthy lifestyle. So during today's conversation, we're gonna be discussing these six pillars of brain health. And the first pillar is engage your brain, which includes learning new things. The second pillar is be social. And that's really all about being or staying socially engaged. The third pillar is ongoing exercise. Be active and try moving around more often. And we're not saying you have to do a hundred push-ups. You have to uh, run around the track. Uh, it's moving about. It's just it's moving around much more often than you than you already do. The fourth pillar is eating right. This means eating a brain healthy diet. The fifth pillar is restorative sleep. And by that way, by that we mean sleeping better to enjoy the restorative benefits of sleep. Number six pillar is managing stress. Address the mental and the physical effects of stress. And number seven, uh, it's not a pillar, <laughs> but <laughs> basically it's a note to myself. Uh, just to say really shortly, we're gonna be diving more deeply into each of these pillars. Back to you, Sheila. Sure. The importance of brain health. Now there are significant trends today that make it particularly important to stay sharp and maintain the memory. First, the life expectancy is increasing and needless to say that we will want to be in good health to enjoy these extra years and experience we find in them. A second and important trend is that people are rethinking retirement and redefining the whole notion of traditional retirement. Many people will decide to continue their careers or start new ones, either because they want to or because they must do it for the economic reasons. Since we are living longer, the prospects of skyrocketing healthcare costs gives us additional incentive to live as healthy as possible and as long as we can. So finally, current brain research shows that we can grow new brain cells throughout our life and how a brain healthy lifestyle can optimize our chance of maintaining a cognitive health. So let's first discuss the importance of discovering or learning new things. And that's the first pillar. Studies have shown that challenging your brain in new ways or exercising your brain throughout life may strengthen your brain. Our brain is stimulated and it grows when we learn new things or pursue new interests. Stay curious and give yourself a good mental workout by doing something that challenges your thinking, offers you enjoyment and encourages you to grapple with new and complex ideas. Challenging yourself. Activities that challenge your brain and may help to preserve brain functions include teaching or taking a class, learning a new language, or just how to dance, or playing a new musical instrument, or doing complex art and craft work, or reading a challenging book, or exploring um, a topic that is novel, uh, playing challenging card or board game like doing Sudoku number puzzle, are just simple, plain handwriting, good old fashioned letters. You know, we don't do it as much these days. So that's really good for brain too. Now, are brain games helpful? Clinical trials have not proven that the playing um, brain games will prevent a degenerative process or the onset of Alzheimer's. 
But while there is evidence that brain training can improve performance on the task you're training on, and there is little evidence that they will result in better uh, everyday cognitive function. Well, of course, more research is needed. Now, we would love to hear how you are learning new things during the difficult time of COVID-19, during these COVID-19 months, long months. Please share them in chat. We will uh, check the chat room a few times uh, for your comments, questions, suggestions. So please do share. And now we're looking at pillar two. The second pillar of brain health is staying socially engaged. While we may not be able to gather in person because of COVID, of course, there are many ways to stay connected from afar, over the phone or even through video chat platforms like, like this one with Zoom or, or FaceTime or Skype. There are various other similar platforms that most of us are currently using. Studies do suggest that people who have good social networks live longer and are physically and mentally healthier than people who are socially isolated. Connecting with other people is stimulating and challenging, and it often adds meaning and purpose to our lives. In fact, experts say that social connectedness is a key predictor of health and independence in later years. So stay engaged with friends, with family and community. You know, in times of need, your next door neighbor can be your closest relative. According to a study presented at the 2015 Alzheimer's Association International Conference, feeling lonely is dangerous for your brain health. So seek out people who may share your interests. Don't overlook animal companionship. Furry and feathered friends can really bring great joy and purpose into our lives. Also, consider exploring virtual volunteer opportunities that might interest you. For example, Sheila, Charlene, and I enjoy being AARP volunteers, and it really is fun and rewarding. Get involved. Like, here are some few other ideas to help you get involved. Um, maybe organize a regular virtual game night or a book club. Organize virtual lunches or dinners with family and friends. Um, attend virtual community events. Uh, these days, like Roger said, free Zoom calls or WhatsApp video calls or FaceTime for Apple iPhone or iPad users. Uh, these calls to friends and families are real popular. You know, I do this uh, kind of Zoom call uh, global for my global family and uh, we share, you know, just dinner or even lunch, whatever we're eating and just kind of uh, um, have uh, some good quality time together and cherish happy moments. So it, it's really a lot of fun and stress relief too. Um, consider adopting a pet or pet sitting for family and friends or neighbors. Uh, or you can be a dog walker for owners who are uh, currently working from home these days and owners and pets both needing a break, you know, just walk their dogs for a few minutes. Um, please share in chat how you are staying socially engaged these days. We would love to, uh, you know, learn uh, from you also if there are any other uh, suggestions. So now we're looking at pillar three ongoing exercise. This doesn't mean you have to become a marathon runner, like I mentioned earlier. You just need to move more. Get at least 150 minutes of exercise each week, if you can. Move about 30 minutes on most days. Walking is a good start. You know what, in my own house, we have a second story and I go up and down the stairs as part of my exercise. If I can't, if it's a rainy day and I can't get outside, up and down the staircase. It's really a good, good exercise within reason. Beyond the physical, exercise has many benefits. It's good for your brain and heart and it reduces stress. Research suggests that being physically active helps repair and protect chemicals in the brain that are needed for brain function. It helps with increasing circulation, reducing anxiety, improving sleep, and reducing the risk of diabetes, heart disease, depression, and stroke. 
So find activities you enjoy. It's also important to remember, talk to a healthcare provider before you start a new exercise program. I don't mind saying that two or three times during this presentation, it's important. Get active. Now here's some ways to get active, take regular walks, or like Roger said, you know, if you have two story home and the weather is not good outside, just, you know, go up and down the stairs. That also helps build endurance with aerobic exercise like dancing, running, or biking. Get into strength training. You don't have to have heavy, uh, you know, weights, uh, official weights. Uh, you can just use canned food uh, in the home and, you know, do little lightweight exercises, and they're also useful. Work on balance or uh, flexibility and strength with Tai Chi or yoga. You can find many free classes on YouTube on Tai Chi and yoga, and they're very helpful on, you know, for the balance. Um, for example, I know I've been doing some simple low impact exercises with Silver Sneaker Program online short videos. Um, they're free with my uh, Medicare Advantage program and they're a fun way to exercise. One of my most favorite is uh, Boom Mind to improve balance and relax body and mind. Um, well, please share in chat what you are, um, you know, some ways that you move and get exercise. We would love to uh, hear from you. And we'll go over, uh, we'll check the chat in just a few minutes. So we're gonna look at pillar four now, and that has to do with eating a brain healthy diet. What you eat also has a big impact on your brain. Although no specific diet has been proven to maintain or improve brain health, studies have found that certain eating plans help cognition. These eating plans include uh, the Mediterranean diet, which has been around for a long time now. That's, that's easy to Google if you wanna get some ideas on how to try that. Uh, another one is DASH, and that's an acronym, D-A-S-H, which stands for Dietary Approaches to Stop Hypertension Diet. So people suffering from hypertension, high blood pressure, that's a good one to try. Check with your doctor though. Please always check with your doctor first. There's another one called MIND, M-I-N-D, diet, and that's really a hybrid of the two. MIND stands for Mediterranean Dash Intervention for Neurogenerative Delay. We're gonna have a quiz at the end and be sure to study these terms, please. No, just kidding. These plans do justify that eating less meat and sweets and um, consuming more, really, consuming more of fish, nuts, beans, grains, leafy green vegetables, healthy fats, such as olive oil. In general, the field of diet and brain health is very young and gaps do still exist in our knowledge of the effects of nutrients on brain function and more research as needed. Brain healthy foods. Here's some examples of brain healthy foods to add to your diet. Serve your plate with vegetables like kale, spinach, and broccoli. Lots of green, green, and green. Eat whole berries, fresh, frozen, or canned. They all are okay. Use vinegar or lemon or herbs and spices for flavor instead of too much salt and sugar. <clears throat> There are ample fresh herbs available in grocery stores almost year round. I know I get mine from uh, for reasonable prices from Walmart year round. <clears throat> Sometime from all these or most of the time from Walmart I get, you know, and they're pretty reasonable and I do, you know, I find them very, um, you know, flavorable. Also eat more fish and salmon, um, like salmon and sardines. If you are a vegetarian, maybe you can substitute your meals with beans or tofu or multigrain and vegetables. Uh, don't forget uh, good fatty nuts like walnuts and almonds. Uh, but please share in chat what foods you eat as a part of brain healthy diet. And we're going to take um, maybe a minute or two break and let's look at the um, chat, Charlene, see if we have some uh, feedback. 
Yes, Sheila, we do have some feedback. Pat shared a couple things with us. She uh, walks every morning for about 90 minutes. And she also mentioned that her husband uh, tried the MIND diet uh, as well as herself. Uh, include drinking a glass of wine, best part of it. Um, Doris also shared with us that she's, she enjoys the Silver Sneaker program, and you can also get those videos on Facebook free. And she also mall walks uh, to get out. So those are some nice uh, opportunities for you to take advantage of. Definitely. I have not tried the mind diet yet, but, and, uh, you know, so that's definitely appreciated, you know, your feedback. So thank you, let Doris also, and Pat. Let me also yes. add, Doris just shared with us that putting spinach in your smoothie uh, is always something good to add some vitamins to it, as well as walnuts is her favorite snack. Um, so those are some things to consider as well. Definitely. Some variety and, you know, good taste too and good for health. So sounds great. Thank you. So now we're getting to the pillar number five, which is restorative sleep. Sleep does restore the brain. It is vital to brain health and it includes cognitive function. It is essential to overall mental and physical health. Start by getting enough sleep. Adults need seven to eight hours of sleep in a 24 hour period. Practice good sleep techniques. People at any age can change their behavior to improve their sleep. Recommendations include maintaining a regular sleep-wake schedule. And that really is just getting up at the same time every day, seven days a week. Listen to your body, go to bed earlier, and adopt an earlier sleep schedule. Expose yourself to light during the daytime and reduce exposure to sleep. Avoid TV and other electronics within a few hours of your sleep time. Blue light filters can help. And uh, I'll be talking a little bit about blue light filters a little later on in this presentation. Uh, it's, it's part of our new, newer technology and uh, it's really helpful for our, for our health and for our brain health. There are changes to sleep as people age, I should mention. A person who is 50 should not expect to sleep like they did at age 25. You may have to put more effort to get the restorative benefits of sleep. Sleep is more easily interrupted as you age. Deep sleep decreases between the ages of 30 to 60 years. The body's internal clock shifts also. Older people tend to get sleepier earlier in the evening and staying up late becomes more difficult. They also start to awake earlier in the morning. For example, you may get sleepy at eight to 9 p.m., go to sleep, sleep your seven to eight hours, and then wake up at four to 5 a.m. These changes are a normal part of aging and don't mean necessarily that a person's sleep quality is worse or that the person necessarily has insomnia or another sleep disorder. It just means that the timing of your sleep has shifted. So don't worry too much about an occasional bad night of sleep, but consult with your healthcare provider uh, such as a, a sleep specialist, for example, if your life is being negatively impacted by a chronic lack of sleep. Restorative sleep. Here are some other ways to get better sleep and its restorative benefits. Adjust your caffeine intake. Beginning after lunch, avoid caffeine intake. Keep pets that disturb your sleep out of the bedroom. Restrict fluids and food three hours before going to bed. Um, keep smartphones, TV, and electronics out of the bedroom to reduce life exposure prior to sleep. Maybe listen to some soft instrumental music or meditational audios. I love soft piano music or, you know, just a soothing waterfall sound uh, while going to bed. It really relaxes me and just puts me to sleep uh, right away. Um, but please do share in chat what you do to sleep better. So our last pillar of brain health is pillar six, managing stress. 
Now, managing stress includes regular exercise that relieves the mental and the physical effects of stress. Smiling and laughing releases hormones and brain chemicals to balance the effects of stress. Sheila has shared with me that she tries laughter yoga with YouTube videos. To some, it might sound silly, but she said it's a lot of fun and, and it's a great stress relief. Distracting yourself with music or reading can distract you away from going over the same issues or problems over and over again. If you can, seek out green spaces, spend time outdoors if possible, and when it's safe to do so, especially during, during COVID right now, so that you can really regularly appreciate and enjoy nature. But we want to stress that if you live in a community that has issued a stay at home order, check your local government's rules on spending time outdoors. Managing stress. Here are some other ways to reduce stress. Confide in friends. Sing a song out loud and, you know, the, whichever song you love, you know, it just, that also re just releases some good hormones, you know, good uh, to your brain. Um, being silent and still quiets the mind. It is a skill that can be learned through meditation, as simple as sitting quietly and counting your breaths, or a little Tai Chi, an ancient slow moving exercise and some yoga techniques. Um, I personally had uh, multiple head traumas in my life and have lost a large percentage of my vestibular balance on one side permanently. So um, learning uh, beginner's Tai Chi has helped me a great deal uh, with my balance issues as well. Um, so anyone with the balancing issues, you know, you can try that with some free videos on uh, YouTube or um, uh, online, uh, Google. Take stretch breaks and limit screen time. Just walk to the kitchen for a glass of fresh water or just give your mind regular moments of rest. Uh, deep breathing, when practiced regularly, can be calming and the extra dose of oxygen is good for health, good for brain. Just breathe slowly, you know, start with belly and just continue to your chest while expanding your ribs and just, it really relaxes you. Well, please share in chat what uh, you're doing to reduce stress and we'll take a couple moments to uh, check the chat. Uh, Charlene can see if we have some feedback. We do have some feedback. Jo Joetta has shared a couple things with us. She, she walks regularly three or four times a week and she's been doing that for the last 10 years. And she dances all the time as well put on some music and get out there and dance. Um, she mentioned as you, in the previous slide, you talked about electronics, uh, turning off your electronics. She turns hers to do not disturb from 11.30 p.m. to 7.30 a.m. This precludes her from getting any texts or calls unless she uh, likes to, uh, to have them programmed in her favorites. That's a great idea. Do not disturb, okay. Well, thanks for sharing, Joita. Sure appreciate it. Pat so, also, I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. shared that she does warm bubble baths and listens to jazz to manage my uh, her stress. So I have to go along with Pat. That is right up there at the number one thing to do. That's wonderful. Whatever helps you uh, relax, I think it's always good. Thank you for sharing that. So aging Project. studies consistently point to a few fundamental qualities of a brain healthy lifestyle. The overall message is to stay active mentally, physically, and socially with special attention to a healthy diet, good sleep and stress reduction kind of sums it all up into one sentence. Uh, so start with small steps though, and try to do something every day. Try writing out what you will do and when you will do it. So while Sheila is getting the next slide ready, I just thought I'd mention a little more about blue light filters. We talked about limiting screen time within a few hours of sleep. Well, what if your occupation 
requires some computer time that's much closer to your bedtime. Uh, eyeglasses now can include blue light filter coatings on your own lenses or separate yellow tinted glasses, which are designed for blue light filtering, you can buy in many drugstores. Uh, newer cell phones now have automatic settings. Uh, for example, mine does. Uh, I have an Android phone, but I, I've been told that iPhones have it as well. Mine goes on at 8 p.m. automatically, where I, I, I notice that the screen looks a little bit warmer in colors and a little bit yellower tint slightly. That's a blue light filter. It, it filters, literally filters out blue light, which can be uh, involved in making it difficult to fall asleep and get a good restorative sleep. Uh, my inexpensive Windows 10 laptop now has automatic settings as well, which is part of Windows 10 operating system. Uh, and also at around 8 p.m. automatically, the blue light mode, which, which they call night light, uh, kicks in. And if someone is out there that has maybe Windows 10 computer and they have not noticed that, just Google nightlight on Windows 10 and they should be able to tell you how to do it. Uh, Charlene has told me that her Apple computer also has that same uh, blue light filter in it. Uh, Charlene, what, what is that called on, on your computer? I don't remember what it's called, but I Googled okay. it and followed the instructions and it worked perfectly. Great, great. Well, that's good to know. And you can actually put a time limit as to what time you want it to come on mm -hmm. uh, and what time you want it to go off as well. Right, right. And, that, and I found that that's the same with, with Windows-based computers and Android phones and probably iPhones as well. You, you can customize the schedules that you want that filter to be on. Um, yeah, so it's a, it's, technology is great sometimes. <laughs> yes. It's, when it comes to health, it really helps us a lot. Pat just shared with us that she started wearing blue light filters on her glasses. She believes it's helping her uh, managing her exposure. So it mm -hmm. is, uh, I believe it's working. Yeah, I believe it works. I've noticed a difference with me. It, it does work. Uh, you can even get films, a uh, blue light filter film that you can put across on your laptop or on your computer. Now, you know, a lot of TVs now are pretty much are all LCD um, based uh, TV screens those also have blue, blue light in it. So it's not just computers and iPhone and iPhones and cell phones, TVs also, the newer TVs probably in the last five years or so um, are also emitting blue light. So uh, put on, that's I a good actually, time to put on those goggles. Yeah. I'm sorry, Wait, what were you gonna say? Roger, I actually do have a link, you know, if anyone is interested how to um, put the, you know, change the blue light filter on Windows 10, uh, if anyone's interested, but. Um, I like the idea about the glasses too, and uh, Pat actually has it and looks like it's working. So good. Thanks good. for sharing. I have to think about that next time I get my glasses. So. Joyce Thank also you. has the glasses as well that she uses on her computer with the blue light filter. Oh, good, good. Oh, oh that's wonderful. Thank you. Well, resources. Now you have taken an important step towards improving your brain health by joining us today. I encourage you to uh, keep that momentum going. I want to be sure to mention two resources. Staying Sharp, AARP members receive free access to tools and resources for focusing on the six pillars of brain health. AARP Brain Health, find the latest and enhancing brain health and get tips on memory improvement and stress management. AARP Online Learning, you can visit this site to learn about events, webinars, and interactive videos, and more on important issues such as family caregiving, work and jobs, and technology and literacy. Roger. Ex exploring these resources is, is really helpful, such as staying sharp, dot aarp dot org uh, as well as the global council on brain health you see that on the screen there and you've heard us mention the global council on brain health a few times now during this presentation that is a really wonderful resource for everybody and by the way you don't have to be a member of aarp to to uh, uh, uh prize yourself of these 
uh, benefits of knowledge. You're going to really learn a lot about brain health uh, on that Global Council on Brain Health website. That is really a good one. Um, if you have trouble finding that, just Google, Google Global Council. Actually, Google AARP Global Council on Brain Health because it is an AARP website. But that is a website that it is accessible to everybody, not just AARP members. In fact, much of this is, is accessible to most people and non-members as well. There are some that are um, accessible only to members, but not too many of what we're telling you about today. Uh, and uh, so I learned uh, by browsing the aarp.org website, uh, learning about a new book titled Keep Sharp, Build a Better Brain at Any Age. And uh, well, I'm going to let Sheila tell you more about that. Um, I have the book right here. I'm enjoying it. Um, but uh, I'm going to hand this over to you for now, Sheila. Okay. I'm going to uh, stop sharing for a, a couple seconds and then uh, take you to um, browse some ARP. Uh, and show you some of these sites with Roger just mentioned. So please uh, be patient with me. Don't be alarmed if you have uh, your screen turns black for a second. And you'll see the Global Council of Brain Health site. Yes. It yeah, this is great. This is AARP's Global Council of Brain Health site, which um, Roger mentioned earlier too. This site was uh, launched um, about five years ago and um, the council has gathered research around the world and has people with so many different uh, disciplines such as like neurology or psychology, psychiatry, um, epidemiology, and just, you know, range of topic. And uh, you can browse and pick and choose and just, you know, um, just take a, you know, a few minutes of your time and browse whatever you like and just, you know, maybe one or two video clips a day and you will learn a lot about it. And they're quite interesting and fun way to learn. And the goal of this site is to actually provide the trusted and simple information to boost your cognitive health and uh, have healthier brain throughout your lifetime. Now this site can also take you to so many different uh, subsites where we mentioned about staying sharp, which is what we are covering today. There's a site um, a tab I'm going to click on staying sharp. And this tab has, you can see a lot of uh, things about what we talked uh, today, the brain health, uh, music for brain or pursuing your purpose. And uh, Roger was just talking about the book, um, um, stay, book uh, Keep Sharp. And that's the book by uh, Dr. Sanjay Gupta. It's a number one bestseller um, by uh, on New York Times. And he has a small video I would like to share with you. And it's a short, probably two and a half minute video. And um, this book really was published in partnership with uh, AARP. And it's a science driven guide, basically to keep your uh, brain healthy and sharp. So let's see if we can look at this video for a you may see a commercial before, not sure. My patients often ask me if there's anything they can do to help their brains as they get older. I tell them, yes, you can change your brain and you can change your path to better brain health. The brain is remarkably resilient and dynamic and growing and learning and changing. My first time seeing a living human brain was such a powerful experience for me. I looked down in awe as I thought about how much of what we are and who will become, and how we interpret the world exists in that intricately woven bundle of tissue. Our experiences can drive meaningful change in the brain, creating strengthening neural pathways which can protect the brain and its function. The goal of the Brain Health 101 Challenge is to empower you with the knowledge that your brain can be improved throughout the course of your life, no matter when you start, no matter where you come from. Staying Sharp is built on six key science-based brain health pillars. Through interactive content and video, you're gonna learn why these pillars are important to your brain health 
and how to incorporate better habits into your life. This challenge is organized for you to tackle one pillar at a time. So let's take a look. Ongoing exercise. Get moving. Exercise boosts the vascular and nervous systems which sustain brain health. Eat right. A healthy diet is key to maintaining optimal brain function. Engage your brain. Challenge yourself. Learn new things. Stay curious. Explore. Restorative sleep. Go to bed. Scientists believe quality restorative sleep allows your brain to organize experiences, strengthen memories, and rid the brain of toxins. Manage stress. Recognize the difference between good stress, which can be motivating, and bad stress, which can be physically harmful by contributing to things like high blood pressure and anxiety. Practice meditation and mindfulness. Maybe add some yoga into your workout routine. So you see, basically, you know, this uh, is a synopsis of what our presentation just covered. Um, now, ARP does have so many other sites uh, you can go to, and I'm going to maybe uh, just show you a couple more. It's a, uh, this one is uh, family caregiving. It's on, uh, you know, it has just tons of information about do's and don'ts and what you can do uh, as a caregiver and you know how to do a care caregiving at home or if you are in a for, uh, nursing facility or skilled facility what are the differences and uh, just a uh, lot of information there we also have a um, site about the scam and fraud uh, which um, roger actually um, does a workshop on scam and fraud also for ARP. So Roger can probably um, tell you more about this site. Yeah, with the Fraud Watch, um, I, I can tell you that uh, I also participate in giving, uh, being on, on a team that, that gives workshops for uh, fraud and, uh, and, um, and scammers. AARP is so fortunate in that we're able to collaborate locally with uh, law enforcement on a local basis, at the statewide basis with the inter Attorney General's office, who also in, in North Carolina has, uh, uh, Josh Stein, the Attorney General has his own department that is solely geared to protecting consumers when it comes to fraud and scams um, and, and similar issues like that, uh, that affect our, the everyday citizen of, of our state. Uh, but AARP on a nationwide basis deals very closely with the FBI uh, and, and other uh, consumer federal agencies, such as the Federal Trade Commission. Uh, the Federal Trade Commission, for example, uncovered 25 different fake websites last year about, uh, we all know about the, the, all of a sudden we had a shortage of uh, Lysol wet wipes. Well, yeah, yeah. Um, 25 fake websites that were selling those, purporting to sell those, where unfortunately many people sent in their money first to buy a case of it because typically they want to sell it in large bundles. Well, it's really because they want a bigger check sent to them in the mail. And a lot of people really lost money on that. And uh, so those are the kinds of fraud schemes that we include. So we try to uh, include information that's up to date, that's pertinent to what we're all going through now, whether it's a holiday season. Last December, for example, uh, gift card uh, fraud was really big for, for Hanukkah gifts and Kwanzaa gifts, Christmas gifts and so forth. Uh, so we were right up there working with the Attorney General for North Carolina in putting together Fraud Watch Minutes, which are one minute bites of, uh, of fraud information that we've been putting out on social media. Uh, whether it was Twitter, uh, Facebook, and some other platforms. So we try to gear our uh, fraud watch information in different ways could, because everybody learns in different ways, either by video or by written, written words uh, or short videos. So we, we try to be very flexible in the way that we disseminate the information. So that's just another uh, aspect of what uh, AARP does for the, for the, 50 plus community and really for just about the average consumer all around the country. So that's just want to give you a little bit of insight on what we do for fraud as well. 
But uh, today, brain health is the thing. And uh, so that's what we want to tell you all about today, because that's, that's a big deal for all of us, right? Yeah. Back, back to you, Sheila. Yeah, thank you, Roger. Again, I'm going to stop sharing for just a second and uh, go back to the PowerPoint presentation. So please uh, just be patient with me and Charlene can check if she has any uh, additional comments in there. Yes, there's one more comment that was mentioned, uh, Joel, in reference to the Lysol Corox wipe. Uh, Joelle, Joetta had a friend that was involved in that and it was posted on Facebook. Um, she had to cancel her credit card and, and, and Facebook went down for three days and uh, they said it was a three day sale. So, you know, watch out for these type scams all the time, whether it be through Facebook, whether it be through an email, um, just keep your eye open. Don't give any credit card information out to anybody uh, unless you know who you're giving it to exactly and follow up with it as well. Excellent tip. Well, Absolutely. thank you for sharing to it. I'd be sure appreciate that because it's happening all over every day. Thank you. It is. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's session and uh, that the information, discussion, and resources will be of value to you. We really appreciate your uh, all, uh, you know, sharing your thoughts and suggestions with us. Uh, we always learn from you all. So um, thank you for sharing and thank you for attending. And there will be an email follow-up uh, later on. If you register using your email address, the AARP will send you a follow-up survey on your, exper um, on your experience of this program. Um, please be on the lookout for an email containing a link to the survey in about two weeks. The subject line will begin with today's date and read um, month slash date slash year in AARP Brain Health Workshop short survey. It is a brief survey, so please do take it. We would love to hear from you. We can always improve ourselves from your feedback, so thank you. And I also thank you, and thank you for joining us today. We're not quite finished yet. Uh, just a few important comments to make before we let you go. We realize that we might not have been able to get to all of your questions today. Uh, and most of that is really due to maybe some limitations with the time limits uh, that we may have with a, with a Zoom session. But uh, that's why we like to uh, show you additional AAR websites, AARP websites, uh, like uh, Sheila has been showing you, especially that Global, Global Council on Brain Health. That's a, that's a really good one. We believe that the, uh, this extensive amount of information that you see on these websites will back up uh, with much more detail about everything that we've presented today. And of course, there's Dr. Sanjay Gupta's new book, which very closely, as you can see, very closely parallels everything we have mentioned today. So on behalf of Sheila Patil, Charlene Hartman and me, Roger Pierce, I'd like to thank you all for joining with us today. Remember to watch, like Sheila has already mentioned, watch for that email that's coming from us in about one to two weeks we will be so grateful for you all to complete that very brief survey in the mail. And uh, just one last thing to show you, uh, just it's a good idea to show you. When you're leaving your Zoom session today, be sure to look for that red button at the bottom right corner. It says leave. So it's a bright red button. Just want you to be able to see it easily. That's the best way to leave the session when you're ready to. <laughs> so stay healthy. Keep your brain Thank sharp you. and stay safe. Right. Bye for Thank now. Thank you all for attending. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful Thank class. You. Thank you all.